Welcome and good morning. I welcome you to St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in Shippensburg, Pennsylvania. We are so delighted that you have chosen to worship with us this morning. We hope this will be for you a time of holiness and hopefulness and joy, or whatever it is your heart desires in this moment, for we know that our loving God desires that for you as well. So we invite you to settle your soul into the music, the prayers, the scripture, the times of silence, and allow the images to touch your heart and soul and turn your faith into something that is even deeper and richer and truer, so that together we may join in praise and worship to our Lord. Welcome. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen.
The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also may have the grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Amos. This is what the Lord God showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall, built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with a sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent the king Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go flee away to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there, and prophesy there. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is the temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock. And the Lord said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Psalm 85, verses 8 through 13. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. King Herod heard of Jesus and his disciples, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, It is Elijah, and others said, It is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, the head of John the baptizer. Immediately, she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the baptizer on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately, the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I offer these words in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I've chosen to offer this homily with you from my backyard. And many of you have been here, and I invite the rest of you to come out sometime and enjoy a meal with me and sit in the beauty and listen to the bird song and hear the wind and feel the breeze and sometimes the frogs croaking away as we have conversation. Because this is my place of Peace. This is my sanctuary, being in this space, experiencing nature in its fullness and beauty is something that strengthens my soul. It fortifies me for the challenges in life. It allows me to go deeper into the mystery and the presence of God so that when life gets difficult, I have something to pull on. I have some deep reserve in order to give, whether it's in pastoral situations or just the, you know, the busyness of life. It gives me the ability to discern what is right and what is wrong, what is of God's justice and what is unjust, what brings forward God's dream and what destroys God's dream right before our eyes. It reminds me a lot when I was in seminary in New York City and I was at General Seminary and they had a sitting block. And, or they did at that time. And so we had what we called the close, to take a you know, term in England, that there was this beautiful grassy area with lawn chairs that we could sit and talk and 
you'd have meals together and classes together and this wonderful sense of peace and calmness, of course, all centered around the chapel of the Good Shepherd. And so every day I would hear those chapel bells ring and I would enter into worship in a really profound way. And yet all we needed to do was walk in that corner and there was New York City in all of its glory and all of its beauty and also all of its kind of craziness of the closeness of people around you and uh, the diversity of people and the, um, this in some ways, at least initially, the foreignness of it to me. And so it was so important and so helpful to me to go to a seminary where I could be rooted in a sense of goodness and worship and beauty so I could face the world around the corner. So in our gospel story today, of course, Mark uses this technique of the sandwich. So, you know, as you remember from last week, Jesus went to Nazareth and people were like, well, who are you? You know, where did you get this wisdom from? And they rejected him. And as a response to the rejection, he didn't curl up and go away. He actually said, okay, come on, we're going out into the world. Go out into the places where they will receive, where their hearts will be open to my healing grace. And so he commissioned the disciples to go out two by two. And so right after that story, and before the disciples come back reporting on how well they did, Mark puts something in between those stories, and he puts the beheading of John the Baptist. Now, a couple things that are kind of interesting, of course, that story of the beheading of John, who was the one who foretold the birth of Jesus and the ministry that Jesus would have, he's killed. And so, of course, it can foreshadow Jesus' death. And, and we learn from the very beginning that Jesus' ministry, that of love and humility and vulnerability and raising up the lowly in the society and bringing everybody in, was going to be rejected. It was going to be rejected by the political and the religious structure of that time. So we can kind of know that if we follow Jesus, that it is likely that there will be people who will reject us. It is likely that when we push up against that which is unjust in our society, in the, pol in the political system, in the social system, in the economic system, and all of that, I mean, Jesus' ministry was rooted in everyday life and pushing up against the powers looked at prestige and comfort and um, a sense of economic security as we might talk about it for those of us who've read the book cast a certain caste system you were on the top which meant you were better than those who were in this lower caste and certainly women were in the lower caste and so one thing that's interesting about this is that John the Baptist whom Herod believed at least in the Gospel of Mark believed was just and holy. He admired, he was intrigued by. But he made this oath, and he made it in front of his friends, and he couldn't risk embarrassment. He couldn't give in to what he knew was right. He gave in to what he knew was wrong to save his reputation, to hold on to the prestige, to hold on to the power. And it all happened because a woman said, I want John's head on this platter, a woman who had been put to shame by John because of her you know, immorality and her marriage to now her brother, to her husband's brother. And so, you know, it's a rather mixed up thing, um, and yet that's the world we live in, that we know what's right and holy and just, and we walk out our door, and there we are confronted with all sorts of forces that aren't as we are. And we have to know what to do about it. And so John and Jesus talked very clearly of confronting it. Also, when they met rejection, to move on and continue to work with the hearts that would be open to their message. And so there's lots of good takeaways from this gospel. Certainly it is to know yourself, to know the truth within you. To find your sanctuary. This is mine doesn't need to be outside. It can be in a corner of your bedroom. It can be anywhere that you want where you know your soul can be strengthened. You're feeling the presence of God can be so real to you that you are fortified to live in the real world and find that balance to discern when it is that you call out truth 
or you call out injustice, and to know there will be a cost to it. It would be a very wonderful thing, and it will be a wonderful thing when God's dream is realized. But until that time, we need to be aware of that. We need to have strength of soul, to, as we did in New York City, walk around the corner and find this, this city in front of us, full of all sorts of things that may seem unfamiliar or very different to the solidness and the gentleness and the vulnerability we felt in that chapel every day. How do you know when to call it out? How do you know when to shake your feet, the dust off your feet and move on? That's called discernment. And we do that in community with others and when we strengthen our own soul. So as we ponder these texts, as we imagine what it is like to live in Christ, to be made new, to have within us that spirit of justice and peace and fullness for all people. May you hold on to the truth of Christ, the truth that has been planted deep within you, and take it into the world. Don't allow the world to govern your reality. Allow your reality with God to govern your interaction with the world. Take your faith from your heart from inside our beautiful sanctuary out into the world to make the decisions that bring about God's dream. Amen. The Prayers of the People Good people of God, I bid your prayers for Christ's holy Catholic Church. May it be a beacon of peace, unity and understanding in an often conflicted, divided and confusing world. We are the body of Christ on earth. May we witness to your love. I bid your prayers for all peoples throughout the world. May we find a way to bring an end to the conflicts that surround us, that all may be safe wherever they may be. We are the body of Christ in the world. May we make peace. I bid your prayers for all in need of wholeness, especially those on our parish prayer list. Tabby Lewis, Frank, Kevin, Brandon, Susan, Kelly Ann, Janine, Gardner Lane, Robbie, Jean, Rick, Susie, the family of Star Ariola, Kathy, Ellen, Eugene, Sue, Lloyd Spooner, and Andrew Shabbat, Jack and Linda Horner, Ashley Mann, Chris, Rebecca, Jonathan, Pierre, Sassy, Tony Yankowski, Melissa, Catherine, Kathy, Deb, Cameron, Jan McCrory, Emma Jean Bankson, Susan and Robert Glick, Chuck Bloom, Richard, Evan, Roseanne, Jack, Kathleen, Amy, Tabitha, the Williams family, Alice, Samantha, Wanda, Margaret, Brian Hellman, Rachel Mooney, and for those who care for them, and for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, especially remembering the family of Jerry Durham, the friends of Linda Gatchell, 
Donna Starr and Danny, Brandon and Emily, Stan, the family of Dick Weller, Dina and Patrick, Pierre and Sassy, Laura, Christina, David, Jonathan and Joseph, Laura and Pat, Diana, Kathy, Ellen, Fred, and Tom, Susan, Connor, and Matthew. We also pray for God's peace and protection to be upon those who are active duty in our military. Andrew Harkins, Caleb and Kelly Reader, Levi Nelson, Kyle Hubert, and Brent Welch. And we pray for those who we may name silently or aloud who are in need of Christ's healing. We are the body of Christ to a broken world. May we bring Christ's healing love. I bid your prayers for all those saints who have gone before us. May we strive for the fullness of your presence when our earthly time is done. We are the body of Christ in this time as we await our time in God's kingdom. I bid your prayers of thanksgiving for this parish of faith especially for our ministries to the hungry in our community. May we be guided in our life at St Andrews to learn how to bring others to Christ, seek forgiveness and strive for unity and concord. We are the body of Christ to one another. May we seek and serve Christ in our neighbours. God, our hope. May your blessing empower us, our thanksgivings and our prayers, for we put our trust in you. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So come, you who have much faith, and you who have little, you who have been here often, and you who have not been here for a long time, you who have tried to follow, and you who have failed, come, it is the Lord who calls your name. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of God's Son, Jesus our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forever. Amen. <laughs> Thank you.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you for worshiping with us today. May God continue to bless and keep you now and always with love. Mother Barbara and the St. Andrew's family.